part of this whole journey was about permission, permission to look at Jewishness in a different way. So that was both permission for myself, but also permission um, given to some of the women that I interviewed. And when I began this process, um, you know, first of all, I, people were not completely, scholars were not completely encouraging about the topic, but I just had the faith that when I looked for these Jewish women, they would be there. So I started with um, a woman who in some ways was perhaps the earliest, one of the earliest Jewish women to make a very strong commitment to the civil rights movement, Dor Dorothy Zellner, who went south first in 1960 to do a training on nonviolence with CORE in Miami, and then subsequently uh, became a staff member of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and helped run the Student Voice, which was SNCC's um, newspaper with Julian Bond for many years, and has continued to be an activist now into her 70s. Um, so first of all, I just want to make sure, do people know what SNCC is? Does anybody have a question about SNCC? You're good. OK. Um, so Dottie was the first person I interviewed, and I went to visit her in her office at the Center for Constitutional Rights in New York. And I remember I had to go down two flights of stairs uh, on this winding spiral staircase, and I got to her office, and there was this gorgeous Richard Avedon photograph of her and Julian Bond and her first husband, uh, Bob Zellner. And um, so I said, you know, thank you for meeting with me. Um, I'm doing this research on Jewish women in the civil rights movement, I'd like to talk to you about it. And she said, Jewish women in the civil rights movement, why not Buddhist women in the civil rights movement? So um, having grown up in a sarcastic family, I was able to handle that. Uh, but you know, I'm actually grateful to Dottie for that moment of resistance and challenge uh, because I, I stayed with it. And eventually, you know, we've had this now 15 year long conversation, but in the beginning she, started to thank me for giving her permission to think more about her Jewish identity just in conversations we had. And then when we spoke together, she started to talk about it more publicly. So um, I'd like to, and, and this actually ended up being true of a number of the women that I interviewed, that they said this process gave them permission to go back and to think about what being Jewish meant to them in relation to their civil rights activism. But when I first started to do these interviews, the response was, and this response became the name of my dissertation, we didn't think in those terms then. So I had to not be stopped by that um, and continue asking, and I did. And um, in those conversations, there were some very rich responses. So I just want to share with you uh, one that Dottie Zellner shared with me that became uh, a quote that, I, that starts chapter five of my book, which is Many Ways of Being Jewish. Dottie said, I think it's important for people to understand that you can say you're a Jew, you can be ready to go out to the firing squad because you want to say you're Jewish, and you can be proud of being Jewish without ever having one shred of religious feeling. And she said this very militantly. Those of you who know her would understand how militantly she said this. Um, so the diversity of Jewish identities is a very important theme. And even as we think about um, the impact of Jewish identity on civil rights activism, we have to understand that the meaning of Jewishness varied from you know, the very militant, atheist, radical Dorothy Zellner to um, a woman named Miriam Glickman who came from an Orthodox Jewish home in the Midwest. So this is really an inquiry. This is not a fixed answer about um, Jewish women's motivations for going south.